garden showcase friends before i start this video today i just wanted to put a little addendum in there i want to thank you for the comments and the nice notes and things that i have received from you um i know it's been a long delay and uh, there's been a lot going on and i think uh, aaron on garden answer pretty much summed it up in this past sunday's recap better than anyone that i've ever seen about starting a channel um it's a lot of work a whole lot of work and the rewards are sometimes there and sometimes they're not. Well, here's kind of what happened with Antique and Garden Showcase last year. We got within about 200 watching hours of being able to monetize the channel and then it reset after 365 days and lost pretty much all the gains that I had then. So I had to look at that and say, was that truly worth it? And it's not always all about the monetary gain, but when you are putting in that much effort, yeah, that is a factor. And being that it's I'm a team of one, it does slow things down quite a bit, and I've said that before. Having said that, I do want to try to keep this going, and I think there's, um, I think there's fuel in the fire to do that. There's been a lot of um, interest in things, and maybe getting things back up and running in a good way. Now, I am taking some time. As I said, I, I'd only planned to take a couple of weeks. It's turned into more like six weeks. I started a new job, which I dearly love, and we have been doing one thing right after another. I think we're on our sixth estate already this summer, trying to help people um, liquidate their estates, get those to auction, and move from one right into the other, and it's just been, it's just been a continuous cycle. So, in this video, I'll kind of explain what my new job is, how I'm doing that, and then hopefully we can get back on some sort of pattern. Thanks for watching. Glad to have you back. Good morning, Antique and Garden Showcase friends, and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while that we've had a chance to talk or do anything, and it's mostly because of all the work that I've been doing, and storms, and life, and just a lot of things in general. So today I'm going to take you on a little tour of what I am doing as a new job. So basically this is what a cataloger setup looks like. We've got lights, we've got a background, I've got my tea over here, and I've got a table with a lot spread out on it. This particular lot has a plush bear, some Santa Clauses and things. I'm working on a lot of the Christmas up here right now. So what I do is I take the best possible photographs I can of the entire thing, and then I go to individual things and try to get information, you know, if there's anything about it, how it can be used whatever, and put that in the description. And then it gets assigned a number on the box, and then the box gets taken out here to a shelf. And there are lots of shelves of things here at this particular auction. I'll just run you down through there real quick and you can take a look. Now everything down through here I have cataloged and worked on this week. Those are really cute. And over here, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of things. A lot of this was from Bronner's and other places. I mean, it's like Christmas blew up in this place. So this is what I've been working on just this week. But ahead of me is this room, which has not been touched. And it's got fall themed things. It's got furniture. It's got artificials. It's got more furniture. It's got more Christmas. So everything in here, I'll have to pull off the shelf, take to my setup in the other room, describe it, and then assign it a number and put it in the auction. So, as you can see, this is no small task. This is just the upstairs portion of a home. I've already done the dining room and the office downstairs. We've got another cataloger or two that are working. The garage, the kitchen, the bedrooms, the jewelry, all the stuff like that. So, big job. This is 
a little bit of what's been keeping me away from antique and garden showcase for a while now. So after a long day of cataloging, I am back home and I'm going to take you in the garage and show you what I've got started under grow lights. I actually found a cutting of an old thyme rose at one of the estates that I was working on a couple of weeks ago and I think it's going to actually take root. It's really pretty pink, kind of like that red farmhouse rose that I kept from our old farm property. So I'll show you what I've got going on in grow lights right now. So this is the rose cutting that I took from an estate and I put it in a two thirds mix of perlite to one third mix of potting soil. I found that ratio online and I thought, well, I'm gonna try it and use it. I did uh, cut it at a 45 degree angle and I slit the stem slightly and put a little rooting hormone on it down in the lower portion. But I do see, I think, bud growth right here. I think it's coming out. So I'm pretty sure this one's going to take root. This one looks okay. It's still um, keeping its green color, but I'm not seeing, unless right here, there might be a little bit of bud growth there on the lower portion of that one. But I'm about 99% sure this one's going to take. Now let's go check out some stuff in the yard. It's really pretty out there now. So a lot of projects took off really well here and I do apologize again for not being very proactive with Antique and Garden Showcase right now, but trying to do this new job has proven to be challenging. I did 55 lots today, um, what you saw earlier, and that's roughly in the last two days, I've done almost 12 full shelves. So this planter has turned out to be a family favorite, sparkling amethyst. I've got hot flash, I've got candy land, and I've got a pink, which it's, this is evening, so the pink uh, gara is kind of going in. It blooms more in the morning, but it still has a pretty contrast back in there. So that planter is just one I threw together. There was no recipe. Uh, it was just out of my own imagination, and it's kind of turned out really neat for this space anyway. So kind of got the yard cleaned up. My 4th of July was spent mowing out here. So at least the yard's all nice and tidy. A few weeks ago, it was all brown and ugly. It's back green again. We had a really rough drought period here for several, several weeks. We became almost three inches deficient in rain and I put every bit of drip system into play that we've got. Um, this bed suffered during that time, but it's finally coming out really pretty. Um, the, uh, the caladiums have come out really nicely. These are the radiants. And then of course the verbena boneriensis, it will thrive in just about anything. The white swan marigolds, I love the color. They're not very dense though. I mean, but they'll, they'll start filling out a bit more. And I see my nemesis out here. I've got to take care of that. Oh, I've got Japanese beetles on my marigolds. Ooh, in clusters, so I'll be getting the dust out for those. I saw them on other plants the other day. I had trouble with my cannas this year. They dried out too much in the garage over winter, but I did manage to revive one Cleopatra in there, which I'm proud of. Uh, I got some of the others in here. They just, it's been very slow this year. I mean, here we are at the beginning of July and usually I have cannas in bloom by now and I don't right now. On this end, the uh, pink caladiums are doing really well. Whew. Lots and lots of butterflies and bees. I do have a white canna in there blooming. I didn't even know that. All right, we'll go take a look at some other areas. Before we check out those other areas, this is what I am using uh, to take care of the Japanese beetles this year. It's Captain Jack's dead bug. It's a dust. So just pop the little lid and just sprinkle some dust on there. And it does a really good job. Uh, seems to. I had trouble with them on my uh, Vermillionaire. 
out there. That's the first that I saw them and I didn't know that they were on the mirror gold. So I'm gonna go treat those and then we'll take a look at some other areas. Well, gardening success for this year have been the pots on the wall. I absolutely love the Priscilla purple uh, petunias uh, by Proven Winners. And then I've got the uh, red lantana there in the middle. I can't remember the variety I bought at this point. Their tags are lost down in there, but they have been so pretty. I mean, they make just such a pretty wall, repeated pattern all the way down through there. And then this has been really pretty too. Of course, I'm at a bad time of day. This is evening and of course back in here, you can see there's a thunderstorm brewing and you can't walk out the door here anymore without having a thunderstorm or bad weather seems like. But uh, we try to work things in in between when we can, even if it's a YouTube video. Ha. <laughs> That's been a joke here lately, right? Anyway, we got butterflies on here. They're loving the lantana as always. Day lilies are really pretty. The yellow is a Mr. Lincoln. Uh, the purple is not blooming there. That's a jungle beauty. There might be one up here blooming. That's really pretty. Really pretty color. Jungle beauty. And then lots of other day lilies. I just dusted my vermilion air. You can see the Japanese beetles are trying to feast on it something awful here lately. I don't know why they're attracted to that. I've not seen that happen before, but uh, I've had to come out and dust just about every night to keep those off of there. Anyway, the impact of the wall, there's some more pretty day lilies. This is day lily time of year now. So you're gonna get lots of color from those. The um, this planter is looking a little rough. It probably needs a good dose of fertilizer. I've not had a chance to do that yet. The caladiums here are doing pretty well. I need to switch on the water tonight. They're looking a little dry. So I'll go over there and do that in a minute. More jungle beauty. I think this one was called My Melinda. It's a real pretty soft pink. The uh, formal garden is a real mess to say the least um the boxwoods that i replaced look like they're doing well they're not catching up the others are finally putting on growth really well the pansies will not die for some reason these are like summer varieties and they're they are living the uh, caladiums in here are teeny tiny and they're not coming out very well and that's strange for that one because i've had good luck with it in the past and they're usually big and full but it's been a weird season, and that's all I can say. Weird, weird season. But the overall effect is rather pretty still. Of course, there's been like really good petunia growth here. Not so good petunia growth here. Fairly decent petunia growth here. Weeds that need to be pulled there. And then I didn't have enough of those petunias, so I had to fill in with a couple of the priscillas back here. It's been one of those years. That's all I can say. I'm about to write it off. But anyway, <laughs> a strange thing happened here. A bird decided to chew off all of my Dichondra Silver Falls to make a nest. And it had decimated this before I knew it. So look at this one. And now let's compare it to the other side. And you'll see the amount of damage I've had because of one crazy bird. Look at this side. Look at how much stuff they ran off with over there. They should have looked the same at this point. But this one's a success, really pretty. I like that uh, combination there. Another fail this year is the front porch urns. Fail on one side, this side of the fail, this side's a success. I don't know, I don't know what happened over here and I don't think it's a water issue. But for some reason, when I divided this caladium, the parent bulb seems to want to thrive. The offspring is not doing so well. So who knows? Anyway, here's the back side of this. This is a pretty color. These came from my favorite uh, place to buy, Warren's. I bought these uh, ivy geraniums down there. I love that variegated color. In fact, everything came from there, the filler too. All right, well, let's take a look. We'll go around back and see what's going on in the kitchen garden area. 
All right, so back to the house, and I do apologize for all the noises. There are people mowing the air conditioning units on. There are noises everywhere out here, but uh, the potatoes were a success. They need to be dug. I've dug just a small portion right up here, and it's already made like three meals right there in just that one little spot, so I've got all of that left to dig up and store, which is good. Love those potatoes. Red New Orleans, they do really, really well. Back here, Strawberries were a huge success this year. We got so many strawberries here. All of the shade caladiums are doing really well here too. These are the more exotic type ones. This one needs to go, but it's got some good growth coming out there. I did a black elephant ear, a black stemmed, which is not growing too well back here. And some proven winners begonias I've never tried. So there's that. There's some pretty daylilies back here. My shadow. Of course, this time of day, they start to fade. I'm still, canna's not coming up. Should, those were my red ones. These were, I don't know. These were bronze orange. So I managed to save the bronze orange. And I think these were the pink. Yeah, so save those. This one was called Stargazer. I've had it for a really long time. In fact, I think since I was in high school almost, that one's been around here. So an unusual variety. I think this is Carolina Cranberry here. It's a pretty kind of variegated cranberry and another Mr. Lincoln. Let's take a quick look outside. I did just put a caladium in this pot this year. Oh, this is a pretty one. I bought this one from the Daylily Farm about two or three years ago. Out here, I put in a Clematis on either side. This one died all the way back and came back from the roots. This one um, did really well, but it's not putting on much growth right now. Dahlias. I had these dahlias stayed outside during the negative temperatures of December here and overwintered. How? I don't know. I've never had any luck with dahlias and these are really pretty. The Hawaii one down here has just about given it up, but it's still been very, very pretty. I don't think there's anything else on the back side of the fence. There's a still bee right now and a few lingering day lilies back here irises didn't last long because they were transplanted the peonies didn't last long a new uh, hollyhock and another japanese beetle Ugh, if you don't have these things consider yourself lucky this is a double blooming lily that my grandmother's sister had and i got hold of one of those um, I wish they could breed that to different colors. It would be so pretty, that double ruffle like that. This is an old, old trumpet lily in white that's really pretty. It started to bloom. I didn't know it was blooming yet, but love the old trumpet lily. This was from a family member's yard many years ago. Some mulch left that hasn't got done and some zinnias that are budding up right now and a few lingering cucumbers on the outside. It's been a wild year just trying to get a few things done around here. And it's been more cleanup than anything else. We've lost this tree, which was a Japanese maple. I lost another one down here, which was a crab apple. Um, a third one in the front I already took out was the weeping cherry back earlier when I had a little time. And yeah, between this new job and between every storm we're getting, it's been rough. I mean, just the cleanup alone in our backyard, it looked like a bomb hit the trees. Now you're probably thinking, it doesn't look like anything's wrong down there. It's cleaned up now, but uh, it looked like a bomb hit the trees. And I'm telling you what, it took a day of two people picking up by hand. And then it took another afternoon of running a lawn sweeper over the backyard and it took three loads of debris off of the backyard just from that storm and you can see if we go around here there's still limbs hanging in the neighbor's yard that are from the storm there 
just as an example of the types of things we've been dealing with. So anyway, I'm going to let that wrap it up here today, right back where we started from with some sparkling amethyst. Thank you all for watching Antique and Garden Showcase, and I hope, and I'm going to try to make it every effort that this is not the last video for a long, long time again. I'm going to try to get back on a regular schedule. It is difficult because of this new job, but I love this new job so much. It's what I've kind of wanted to do for quite a while, and it's been very enjoyable, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit about it. And our next adventure, I'll probably take you back to the booth so you can see what's going on there. We've had some incredible sales starting out July already and a lot of new things going in. So be watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.